Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and today we're going to be solving some equations. Now, the thing I want you to pay attention to in terms of these equations that we solve today is that these equations have what I like to call some special solutions. All right? They're not going to get, they're not going to give us the typical one number answer, whether the number be a positive number, negative number, decimal, fraction, mixed number, whatever. It's not going to give us that. And you'll see what we end up with and why, we, why I refer to these as special solutions. All right? Now, let's take a look at number one. Number one says 72t plus 8 is equal to 8 times the quantity. Don't say parentheses. Don't say parentheses. Say 8 times the quantity 9t plus 1. Whenever you have an expression inside parentheses, we call that a quantity. That's what we do. That's how we refer, we refer to that. We call that a quantity. All right? Now, I want to solve for t, because what I'm saying is, I'm looking for the number that I can multiply by 72, and then add that product to 8. That will at the same time be equal to 8 times this quantity in the parentheses, 9 times that same number, plus 1, times 8. I'm looking for that. Now, there's some steps I got to go through to get to t, because my goal is to isolate t all by itself. All right? So... First thing I want to do always when I'm solving any equation, if my equation has parentheses in it, I want to get rid of the parentheses. And I think you should do that too. That's my recommendation. Get rid of the parentheses. Now, next thing is how do I get rid of the parentheses? We use a little something I like to call, well, everybody calls it this, the distributive property, right? The distributive property. Basically what it means is if there's a number juxtaposed or placed adjacent to the parentheses, we just simply multiply that number by every term inside the parentheses. So basically, the number outside gets multiplied by everything inside. The number outside gets multiplied by everything inside. And don't forget to multiply by the second term. A lot of people do that. A lot of people remember to multiply by the first term, but neglect the second term for some reason. Don't neglect the second term. Let the second term live. Give that 8 to the second term too. Alright? So, we're going to do this. On the right-hand side of this equation, because this equation has a left side and a right side. A left side and a right side. Notice what the boundary is. The equal sign. The equal sign is the boundary. So I'm going to do 8 times 9, and I know my multiplication facts. So off the top, I know 8 times 9 is 72, right? So that becomes 72t, because that's 9t's times 8, which all together, that gives me 72t's. Then again, I don't want to neglect the 1. So I do 8 times 1, which is just 8. And now, because I did that, the parentheses are gone. Now, I'm going to copy down what I have on the left side over again. And now I'm going to continue. Remember what my goal is. My goal is to get t isolated by itself on one side of the equation. Now, looking at this, you might say, oh, well, what am I going to do? Because I got a t on the right side and a t on the left side. Okay. There are many things we could do at this point. We could transpose, right, which is a favorite of mine, which basically just means you pick up a term and just move it to the other side of the equation. Or you pick up a term and move it to the other side of the equation, right? But when you do that, you have to change the sign. So if it was positive first, it becomes negative. If it was negative first, it becomes positive. But the more formal way that most textbooks will show you, and I'm going to just show it that way using the inverse property, right? I'm going to show, you, show it to you this way. So basically, if I decide that I want the t to be on the left side of the equal sign, then that t is fine. This 72t over here is fine. I need to get rid of this one. So I need to think to myself, what's the opposite of positive 72t? The opposite of positive 72t is negative 72t. So I'm going to do this. Subtract 72t on the right side. But because it's an equation, and equations are all about maintaining balance, balance is key, right? That's what math is all about. Math is about the truth. Math is about balance and all of that. All that stuff goes back to ancient Kemet. And we can talk about that another time, but that's very important. All right? Balance and the truth. So if I subtract 72t on the right-hand side, I need to also subtract 72t on the left-hand side from the other t term. I don't subtract it from the 8 because I can't subtract it from the 8 because they're not alike. 8 is just a plain number. 72t has a variable in it. they two totally different things. So I slide over here and I do minus 72t 
I draw a line underneath, line underneath. But look what happens, though. Something weird is going to happen. Because 72T minus 72T is not T. It's not 72. It's not 1. It's what you think it is. But a lot of times when you sit in class and you see this problem and you know the answer, but you think in your head it's too easy, it can't be that, it is that. 72T minus 72T is 0. It's 0. It's nothing. That means they're gone. 72T minus 72T is 0. Do I need to write the zero underneath for that? No, I don't. I don't need to. Because nothing doesn't need to be represented in this scenario. Now, what I will do is I'll bring this 8 down. Bring my equal sign down. Now, look. Look what happens here. This is what I was trying to do, though. I wanted the 72 T's to cancel out over here. I didn't know that was going to happen over there. Actually, I did because I did this problem already. But we're just going to act like I didn't know that was going to happen. Right? Now, I bring the 8 down. Straight down, and I'm going to slide it over here, even though my arrow is pointing right there. Now I have 8 equals 8. Now the problem is, we're trying to solve for an equation. We're trying to solve for a variable. Solve for t. But where's t at? t is gone. t is gone. Right? That's why this is called a special solution. The solution to this is that there are infinitely many solutions. So there's no one single number that will make this work. There's no one single number that I can plug in for t here and here and give and get a, a true statement, right? Basically, sometimes some textbooks will call this ARN, all real numbers, right? Two ways to say the answer. Now, what does that mean? That means that I could plug any number in. I could make one, t could be one. And it will make this a true statement. T could be 58 billion. It'll make this a true statement. T could be, I don't know, the price of Bitcoin today. It don't even matter. T could be anything. And it will make this a true statement. And you know why? This is something you should have noticed. Or you could have noticed. 72T plus 8 is equal to 72T plus 8. Those are the exact same thing. Right? That's an identity. That's called an identity. It's like when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. Right? That's an identity. Right. So basically, the rule, the rule that I want you to take away is when when the variables cancel out. Right. And you're left with a true statement. Eight equals eight because eight does equal eight. Right. Then that means that this will be the answer. Infinitely many solutions or you could say all real numbers. Right. So put that in your notes. When the variables cancel out and you get the truth it'll be either all real numbers or IMS infinitely many solutions all real numbers or infinitely many solutions those are synonymous basically all right those are synonymous you know because there's an infinite number of real numbers. All right. So again, try to solve for the variable. If you if your variable cancels out and you end up with a true statement, then the answer is that there are an infinite number of answers. So a whole bunch of answers. That's the answer. Sounds strange, but it'll start to make more sense once you get more familiarity with these types of problems. All right. Now, I need another marker. Um, let's look at number two. Number two says 2x plus 3 equals 2x plus 7. All right? Again, another special solution. I'm going to show you what happens on this one. So now, I don't have any parentheses, so I don't got to worry about that, right? But I do have x's on each side of the equal sign. I got an x on the right and I got an x on the left. I want to have x on one side of the equation. And I like to have my x's on the left side. If you want x's on the right side, you can do that. But that's just not my thing. I like to have x's on the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this 2x. So I'm going to do minus 2x right here. And then because I subtract the 2x on the right, and we're all about maintaining balance, right? Balance and order in our math problems, we want to also subtract 2x on the left side. So we do minus 2x over here also. 2x minus 2x is 0. And again, 2x minus 2x is 0. 
So we have a similar thing happening. That happened in example one. Now, we bring the three down, bring our equal sign down, bring our seven down. And I'm going to slide my seven over here. I can do that because it's still on the right side of the equation. Now I have a statement that says three equals seven. That's real suspect. Because I know and you know that three don't equal seven. Three dollars and seven dollars are not the same thing. They're not. Right? If somebody tried to tell you three dollars and seven dollars are the same thing, they try to scheme. Get away from them. Three and, and seven are not the same thing. So this brings me to how to identify the other type of special solution. When excuse my handwriting, but when the variables cancel out and you get a law, then there is no solution. So this problem has no solution because 3 equals 7 is a lie. If I try to tell you that 3 is the same thing as 7, I'm not telling you, in the real number system, I'm not telling you the truth. I'm lying to you. So that means that there is no solution. There's no solution. There is no number in the universe in the real number system that we can substitute in for X here and here that will make this a true statement. Right? So we could either say N dot S dot for no solution, or you could write it out like this, no solution. Now here's one thing that I want you to think about. Because sometimes with algebra, we get so caught up in following steps and protocols and processes, we don't think about things conceptually or intuitively, right? Look at the original equation. It said 2X plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 7. Now think about this. We don't know what x is, and we don't have to know what x is, but we do know that 2x is the same thing as 2x. 2x on the left side is the same thing as 2x on the right side, right? So basically that's saying like something, 2x, right, plus 3 is equal to or is the same thing as that same thing plus 7. How is that going to work? That's like saying, Two, let's say 2x was $50, right? Let's say I got $50. If I add three, $3 to my $50, how could I have the same amount of money as if I added $7 to my $50? So when you see equations, I want you to look for things like that. Just look for things like that. Before you get into the whole you know, process of solving the equation, just look at it and see if it makes sense at first, right? Um, and if you see a situation like this where you, know, you simplify it some, and you end up with the same exact thing on the left side and the right side, you also know what's going to happen. You're going to end up having infinitely many solutions. Okay? And down here, you have a lie or, an, or a false statement, 3 equals 7, and we know that 3 does not equal 7. So we can use this symbol, right? Does not equal, right? 3 does not equal 7. So that means that there is no solution to this type of equation. So, I just wanted to get into those today, and I wanted to talk about what I call the special solutions when we're solving algebraic equations. All right? So I hope you learned something new today. Um, like the video if you did. Share the video. Tell some people about it. Um, tell people about the channel. Uh, we're trying to teach math um, out here to the people. All right? And, um, you know, subscribe to the channel. Tell some other people. Tell some other people to subscribe to the channel. And thank you for tuning in. Peace.